Hello and welcome. My name is Kate Green, and I will be the host for these two days of our Seeds of Survival webinar. I'm a program manager in the Rural Women Cultivating Change Project at Seed Change. It's a great pleasure to be hosting this with the Cody Institute in Antigonish, Nova Scotia, our partner in many ways, especially in working with community groups around the globe. It has truly been a team effort to have this conference today and tomorrow. Now I'm going to ask Beatrice Oliver to introduce our first presentation of the day. Beatrice? Thank you, thank you, Kate. Thank you everyone for being here. My name is Beatrice Oliver um, I'm from Sea Change, previously called USC Canada. Um, and just to give a bit of background, in the late 1980s, USC Canada, working with the Ethiopian Biodiversity Institute and other organizations, created a program called Seeds of Survival, or SOS. And that's why today is called SOS, a Seeds of Survival webinar. These, uh, the SOS international training events, uh, several were held. These led to the creation of many seed programs around the world. These programs were supported by Global Affairs Canada and other agencies that recognize the critical importance of smallholder and indigenous seed systems. We hope this webinar contributes to strengthening connections among practitioners, community leaders in this field, funders and allies. We are thrilled to see you here. Thank you very much. We want to acknowledge that the Office of Seed Change is located on the traditional unceded territory of the Algonquin and Anishinaabeg people. We must work to counter continued colonialism and support Indigenous-led food and seed sovereignty, as many of our speakers will um, attest to. At Seed Change and has been with us and in our global partnerships for more than 10 years. Many of you already know him. Pratap will be providing the introduction to our topic on local seed production and marketing. Over to you, Pratap. Thank you. Thank you, Beatrice, uh, and uh, hello, everyone. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, like wherever you are. Um, and uh, I'm very happy uh, to be part of this webinar and also to see so many people and experts all over the world. Um, so uh, these two days seminar, I'm going to, in my presentation, introduce uh, the, 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 the webinar, the content of it, and particularly I'll be highlighting um, some, of the, some of the issues, debate, and also successes, uh, particularly in uh, uh, production and marketing of local seeds or seeds by, by, by farmers. Uh, let me share my presentation. As uh, Bea uh, just introduced, like uh, the Seed of Survival uh, program, uh, the name it comes uh, uh, from, from the experience uh, we had in, in Ethiopia in mid uh, 80s, there was a, uh, as you know, like there was a big uh, uh, reoccurring uh, drought almost for more than three years, starting from 1983 and up to 1984. And, and it affected uh, millions of, of, of uh, smallholder Ethiopian farmers. Uh, so that was uh, like uh, a kind of eye opener for all of us, uh, like how important uh, the seed and farmer seed system are, and when it's affected by uh, the events like this, how it impacts the, the local food production and, and the livelihood of the people. And I'm very happy to see our uh, former executive director, Susan Walls, Dr. Susan Walls, who have been with us for a long, long uh, time. And she had witnessed that and also saw that program growing and, and expanding. Uh, from Ethiopia to many parts of the other uh, other country of the of the globe, so I'm just uh, I'm just uh, trying to um, uh, look at like uh, uh, some of the, the the lessons which we 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 learned from that drought uh, and famine in in mid 80s, and and that actually uh, uh, was foundation of of the seed of survival program which was like uh, uh, that time we had three prominent like uh, organization and people, especially like uh, Dr. Melaku Areda was working with Plant Genetic Resource uh, Ethiopia at that time. 
and uh, and uh, Pat Roy Mooney from ETC Group, and uh, and and Seed Chains. Uh, and at that time, we had director uh, John Martin, which they came together, and 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 formed developed this uh, this Seed of Survival program. Uh, with with a learning from that uh, event was like uh, the breakdown of the seed system perpetuates further insecurity, insecurity and vulnerability. So, as it started in mid 80s, the impact uh, went throughout like uh, in, in the latter part of uh, late 90s to early uh, 90s, uh, because it, uh, it it was it hits the foundation, very foundation of the, the food production. Uh, uh, and and seeds uh, um, are central to survival of, uh, of farmers uh, uh, in, in normal uh, years as well. But uh, it was uh, the impact was uh, even higher during the time of uh, adversary and disaster. And 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 definitely there was a, a, a felt need uh, for a resilient uh, seed system which can with withstand these kind of events. Also, the 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 very uh, the thinking of the of the of the formal seed system or the commercial seed production uh, uh, system uh, uh, as as seed as a commodity or or uh, uh, one of the input uh, that understanding that like that uh, thinking was also shattered because seed are not just another input but a living resource which continuously evolved and deeply associated with the uh, food system of indigenous and local farming community. So uh, that, uh, that understanding actually gave way a lot of uh, kind of insight of how, uh, what kind of seed system we should be supporting or, or uh, to help uh, farmers to not only uh, in this kind of event, but also in their day-to-day uh, uh, life and also formal seed system. Uh, it was as we saw that which was inadequate in meeting seed needs, both uh, uh, the timely action uh, and also volume and 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 the diversity of locally adapted seed was not available during those times. So um, th this uh, actually was showing like how vulnerable our our, our seed system. Uh, well, it was especially when you only rely on 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 our formal seed system, and also importance of conservation and and continuous redeploying of seed of local land races uh, was very uh, critical. And and uh, just to share with you, like uh, in, in the initial of this SOS program, uh, there was uh, like. Uh, uh redeploying bringing not only collecting also collecting and uh, uh, characterizing and collecting uh, the land races the local uh, seed varieties but also from the uh, the, the plant genetic resource center in ethiopia uh, was a lot of uh, genetic resources a lot of local land races were redeployed and and assessed for different uh, uh, production system uh, and there is also need to broaden uh, the seed security framework that address day-to-day -day seed security, um, uh, seed security issue, uh, and that was very uh, vital as well. And and of course, strengthening. Uh, the farmer seed system was equally uh, very important. Now, when we talk about the resilient seed system, um, uh, uh, seed security for framework for a resilient seed system, uh, we are talking about uh, like uh, how how uh, how the the the, the seed system uh, could be supported in a way that uh, we have a resilient seed system. And then there are two uh, two uh, areas I think uh, which which emerged uh, as, as a critical was uh, how we empower farmers uh, uh, of, with that uh, seed security framework. Uh, so using farm using a farmer centered and and holistic approach. So looking at seed system uh, not as a, only as formal seed system but also looking at a farmer seed system uh, in, a, in a holistic approach and which I will, I will I'll discuss later on as well. 
uh, recognizing farmers uh, as a producer, saving, uh, who are producing, saving, exchanging, and marketing seed, and not just mere receiver of the of the seed seeds. Uh, seeds. So usually, like what we see in the formal or commercial seed uh, system, is uh, uh, we we see farmers not being able to produce their own uh, seed or quality seed, or even the farmer seed system is not recognized. And 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 uh, and and there is this uh, argument that. And uh, we have to provide seeds to farm all the time, which is not true, uh, and and it's not realistic to what we see uh, happening in the in the in the in the whole seed system. So expanding uh, and also expanding uh, the seed security framework uh, from uh, three parameters like availability, access, and quality to encompass adaptability, choice uh, uh, choice of seed, and also capacity. Uh, of the farmers to produce and save their own seed. And then these last three uh, parameters actually also contributes to the seed sovereignty framework. Also very important that uh, the, the farmer seed system uh, is integrated in that framework uh, by recognizing, strengthening, and supporting farmers' right for self reliant and control over their seed. So farmers actually don't become dependent. So, uh, on the external uh, seed sources, uh, but they use external seed sources, but also enhance their own uh, seed system and become independent and also have control over. So, so that that framework is very important. So, with this understanding at um, seed uh, change uh, over the years, starting from 2013. Uh, working with Cuban partners, and we are, um, we are happy that uh, our colleague from Cuba is also presenting in this webinar. Uh, we develop a, a seed security assessment and action planning uh, framework, uh, and uh, we have tested in many countries in Asia, Africa, and Latin America. And now we also have a, 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 a guide and, and support for, for using this framework, which, uh, as you see in this uh, diagram, we use six parameters, uh, seed availability, seed access, seed quality, and we have separated seed adaptability, which is very important because your uh, the seed quality can be very high, especially when it comes from commercial or, uh, or formal seed system, but many of them uh, fails to, uh, when it comes to uh, adapting a local production system, both in, in terms of climate, but also in terms of the way smallholder farmers produce their production system with low external input and, and varying uh, production uh, environment. And also choice of seed, which, which talks about the diversity because farmers depend on a lot of diversity to meet their different food uh, culture, need of food culture, but also social culture. And most importantly, the capacity to produce and save their own seed. And this is very critical because uh, the the IPA regime with the the new with the with the commercial and, uh, and the formal seeds prevents farmers to to produce and save their own seed. So in this actually capacity to produce and save seed, save their seed has three component is a social uh, is a technical capacity. For example, you'll see that in many hybrid seeds farmers are not able to produce. Or, uh, Donc, vous even... voyez que dans certaines saisons, les fermiers ne sont pas capables de produire euh, des semences, et, mais leur capacité, leur capacité sociale en termes de, so de capital social, et il y a aussi euh, la, le capital politique. Donc, si vous prenez cette évaluation, ce cadre, on met beaucoup d'accent sur la capacité améliorer les systèmes des agriculteurs, les systèmes de semences des agriculteurs pour s'assurer que leur sécurité et leur souveraineté euh, euh, est, est augmentée. Donc, quand on est... More on how do we support a farmer and farmer institution in, 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 in securing, uh, in, in locally producing and, and uh, saving and exchanging or locally marketing their seed. I'm not going to read everything, but of course, like uh, farmer seed production, uh, also linked with like community seed banks. When there is community seed bank, they have more availability of seed, they have more access. The farmers network in terms of um, uh, the, 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 which enables them to exchange uh, seeds within the farming community, 
Also, when we talk about seed quality, we also talk about farmers' ability to store and processing and storage of seed and seed selection. Uh, and uh, in uh, uh, we talk about like how do we engage farmers in testing uh, the adaptability of the new variety. So all kind of this TBS, uh, participatory variety selection, participatory plant breeding to create new diversity, uh, and, uh, and 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 uh, for the capacity to produce an one seed, farmers or, uh, organization is vital as a social institution, a social capacity, but also local seed uh, certification and and uh, and of course. Uh, the, the support of policy and legal uh, policy, uh, seed policy and, 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 and seed law is, is very vital. Now, I, I just uh, will quickly go through like how do we, uh, we talk about the strengthening national seed system. And when we say national seed system, uh, for many of us, like in, in the formal system, it's only uh, the formal seed system. It doesn't recognize the, the, the farmer seed system. Uh, which even uh, contribute more than 80 to 90 percent, and in in some crops even 100 percent in some country by the by by the farmer system, but it's not uh, recognized that way. But these these two system are actually two side of a coin. Like uh, it's very important for the national seed system. So if you want to strengthen national seed system, it's very important that the farmer seed system is also supported and and an investment is done. Uh, in, in in strengthening that system, especially because uh, the, the the formal system highly depends on pharmacy system for breeding new variety, and and when the new uh, uh, seeds which is uh, developed by formal system ultimately becomes the part of pharmacy system. So this cycle, as you see, but in terms of like um, how they are managed, the the formal system as we know is very uh, it's regulated. Uh, and has uh, uh, a seed policy regulated by seed policy and law, and uh, and it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, has a system which is very um, is actually designed for the for the for the new variety or the commercial variety. There are some and 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 these seeds are uh, usually produced centrally, so the production and marketing is very centralized in many country. There are some uh, country where these are decentralized, is done either through contract farmer or also in 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 the community uh, group by the community group. So this is a, a kind of like um, moving towards more decentralized, is still giving some kind of uh, space for the farmers uh, to to use that uh, for local seed production of, of uh, commercial seed variety. Uh, but if we talk about the farmer seed system is uh, it's saving, exchanging uh, their seeds locally, the quality vary and depends uh, on the purpose. It can be very high quality to medium quality because they trade off the quality because it's a higher cost for that. And exchange and selling is based on trust. Uh, but as you see, like in many country, it is not recognized by the seed policy and law, and even marketing, production and marketing of seed of local variety or land races is illegal. So what we do, like, uh, okay, uh, um, is uh, we have been struggling this uh, 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 while working with our partners globally, uh, and and trying to see like what how we can how we can um, how we can uh, address this issue of, uh, of uh, uh, helping farmers to be able to produce and sell uh, or exchange and sell uh, the, the, the seed of land races or local variety. Uh, there are cases, uh, for example, you'll see, you'll hear uh, the experience from Nepal that uh, the seed law has, uh, the policy and law has accepted uh, and has made provision for the registration of land races or local variety. So that way, uh, the formal system, farmer system is integrated. So it's integrating formal and farmer system uh, is integrated in formal system. So there is a uh, there is a, this um, registration of local variety by the formal system. And because of that, now it is uh, it's possible for farmers to produce and sell uh, the seed of local or land race variety legally. 
uh, and also there is a provision of like a less like um, a low kind of requirement uh, in terms of certifying so there is like a, a, a kind of a, um, truthful level certification or also quality ticket certification of new uh, varieties where farming community or farmers group can also participate in in production and marketing of a certified or, or commercial variety but the, the the challenge still is like how do we how do we how how, how can we um, our farmers can produce and market the, the seed of local variety or, or, or land resources because because of the policy constraint because policy doesn't allow it so what we have been uh, suggesting and 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 a lot of our partners uh, some of our partners are piloting this is what we call a uh, participatory guarantee system uh, where uh, where farming community like farmers group or farmers institution actually uh, identify register uh, identify and characterize and register locally uh, their uh, uh, land races and and use some kind of uh, uh, farmer friendly uh, protocol to ensure quality of the seed and produce that and and then and and, and then is uh, uh, marketed in the name of uh, participatory guarantee system because the farming community like uh, the farmers group or institution guarantee the quality of that seed so this is now being piloted and you'll see that uh, in 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 uh, in the presentation which will, which is coming up uh, but uh, and uh, through that pilot we want to actually uh, kind of create a evidence uh, for uh, supporting like a uh, bring uh, like um, lobbying for policy change in support of uh, this kind of seed. So once we do that, then it becomes again the production and marketing of PGS seed becomes legal uh, and it then enters into the formal seed system. So the whole like integration of farmer and formal and in farmer seed system actually is a, a strengthen the national seed system. So that is the the whole idea. So uh, with that, uh, I'm happy that uh, in these two days uh, semi uh, uh, webinar, we have six cases, uh, which are actually highlighting different uh, different way of producing and marketing local seeds. Like for example, we have this participatory guarantee system uh, case from Bolivia and Mali, uh, a very uh, uh, interesting and uh, um, experience is emerging from that. Uh, we have production and marketing of PPB and local variety seed uh, through decentralized uh, formal certification. It's still formal, but it's decentralized, especially you'll see in Nepal and Cuba case, production and marketing of PPB and local seeds without formal certification, but through community seed bank and pharma co cooperative. And you'll see that in Nicaragua, our faculty, their colleagues will share that uh, experience. And then we have piloting of production and marketing of locally certified EPB and farmer seeds through engagement of CL and farmer seed committee in Honduras. So I, I hope like uh, I, I'm sure uh, you'll enjoy those uh, and um, uh, the six uh, cases we have for this uh, two days webinar, but we are also uh, will welcome the ideas and some of the experience uh, you have uh, during the discussion. But also, this is a beginning of uh, of this uh, same uh, webinar series, which will also uh, in future we want to continue this and also uh, provide this uh, as a platform uh, for other organizations, other uh, uh, as a community of practice, uh, especially uh, working in the in in market uh, production and marketing of of uh, of uh, seeds of local variety or seeds produced locally and marketed. So with that. I, I I conclude my presentation. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Bea. Now. Um, thank you very uh, much, Pratap. Yeah. Thank you, Kate. Over to you. Thank you for starting us off on a really interesting two days. Our next speaker is, if you could stop your screen share, Pratap. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Uh, next, uh, we've had many people join us, and we're so pleased to have so many people attending the webinar today. Uh, we do have interpretation available. Select the language of your choice at the bottom of your screen. 
and we will be having a discussion and sharing time at the end of the presentations today. And we will also have a slight break at the two hour mark. Our next speaker is Felix Valle Vega, the director of PRODI in Bolivia. He is an agronomist specialist on local development and agroecology with extensive experience in participatory guarantee systems developed in farmer communities in Bolivia. He's the executive director of the Comprehensive Interdisciplinary Development Program, which is what PRODI translates to in English. Felix, over to you to share your screen. You have 15 minutes. Okay, so my name is Felix from Bolivia. We are located in the northern part of Potosí. So we are in the center of South America in Bolivia. And our territory is uh, stanchion is 12,186 square kilometers, five provinces, 15 municipalities, and uh, our population is around 278,000 inhabitants. So these are the altitude ranges from 4,800 to 18, uh, thousand meters above sea level, so very close to the heaven with that. Then this uh, allows severe, a different microclimates. We have the Puna, the Bali, and the micro valleys. This creates microclimates with different and diverse Andean ecosystems. And it is home to a range of native agrobiodiversity from towers, legumes, fruit trees. We have citrus, prunus, and ona persia. So we have a huge biodiversity just because of our location. It's very variable ecosystem. This area in Bolivia, since the colonization and part of our history, is well known by its potential in mining. In the northern part of Potosí, as in many other countries were mining, is key development is pretty low that this area is considered a red zone in poverty levels there's a lot of migration a huge poverty rate below the average and we haven't really focused on the agricultural potential in the area. There are lots of diversity and variety, and it is probably one of the areas with the mega diverse varieties of potatoes in the region, but we have not actually seen its potential. So thanks to the support of seed change and other donors such as Manos Unidas, ICO, and CCM, we promote the comprehensive development with an agroecological approach. Indigenous communities are the ones that actually been impacted because of the lack of development in the agricultural system, but they are actually the ones that conserve, preserve native fish to strengthen the ecological agri-food systems. In Bolivia since 2006, there are lots of different changes. We were the republic, but since 2006, we became the plurinational state. Lots of rights become law, legislation, that support the ecological production towards the good living. It is a terminology that has been discussed and defined. We need to live 
the ambiente, um, tenemos que vivir en la with nature, with the environment, with culture, with uh, all of us. It sounds really nice. And it is. Que es del 35, since 20. then, since 2007, where law 3525, where um, they focus on the regulation and promotion of agricultural and forestry, a national technical standard was created, which is called the SPGs, approved by the um, resolution in 2012. We have been promoting this law where we define exactly the main aim of it. This ecological production system has two different certifications. This national system of control of organic production has different types. First of all, for international trade or export recognized by the ESEGAI 65. This is not something that we have been working on, but we know about, we understand it, that this is the a way of certifying. But for local trade, to local trade or alternative warranty systems. So this is a standard that allows for farmers to participate through their sort of umbrella associations. So it's a national strategy for participatory guarantee systems. And uh, it's, uh, it involves the ministries of rural development and land planning, production and development and plural ecology, foreign affairs, environment and water, health and sports. But in addition to these uh, civil society organizations that are involved, there's also uh, different uh, workers groups, you also have uh, representatives of uh, uh, organization for communications in Bolivia. And these are all of the groups that, you know, represent society. So we have participatory certifications for ecological prod products. And this is where we see a gap, if you will. So although this uh, you know, participatory guarantee system gives opportunities to farmers, they're able to sell their products, they forget about seeds. So we are trying to demonstrate that farmers produce seeds because that's part of their, their, their work in the, uh, family, the, the plan for a household, uh, there is some production that is for household consumption, some is for sale. And to uh, develop seeds, there are different standards for this. And so this is where we're encountering problems. We have tried to, well, everyone always says seeds are the start of the food chain and they're also the heritage of indigenous people. But if we look at the general seed standard, uh, it imposes mandatory seed certification. Uh, so the seed has to be certifi certified. And if not, uh, there are penalties for uh, selling, distributing, transporting, donating seeds, all of these things can be penalized if the seed is not certified. So let's say you uh, can sell, you can exchange, I, you know, all of these things are, are very common behaviors with seeds, uh, traditional uh, customs. However, this is something that uh, there's, is now being prevented. 
so the seed has to be registered with ENIAF, the National Institute for Agricultural and Forestry Innovation. And in order to uh, in order to be certified, it has to be registered with ENIAF. And to register it, you have to be the breeder. So under the law, uh, it's a person who has put this through a process of improvement and so on. So uh, here we have a gentleman that I know, uh, and uh, he and uh, his wife here, they uh, collect seeds and conserve them. And they have uh, many, many different type of uh, types of seeds for potatoes that you can see on the right. These are very different from conventional, um, traditional potatoes. They're, many different uh, varied strains. These are not registered. They are not able to register them because it is not easy. It's very, very difficult to register seeds with ENIAF. So here, seizing opportunities. So legal opportunities, for example. In 2009, when uh, the state became plurinational, there was a lot of uh, changes in regulations. So suddenly people would talk a lot about mother nature, about living well, and these kinds of terms that hadn't been used at the state level in the past. And so there was um, a focus on protecting genetic resources. So in uh, Article 381, Paragraph 2, it indicates that the state will protect all genetic resources and microorganisms found in its ecosystems, as well as the knowledge associated with their use and exploitation. And, but then we have a law 144 of the community farming production revolution in its article 13 on policy for strengthening the productive base. We have seeds. So the production use, conservation and exchange of high quality seeds shall be promoted and protected to guarantee their supply for production by means of encouraging the recovery, conservation, breeding, production and spread of indigenous people's native seeds. It is very clear and specific, and this needs to be done, right? And who is responsible for this? Well, it's the state authorities. And in uh, it, it also talks about uh, the creation of seed banks, so seed funds and collection centers that make it possible to preserve and generate strategic seed reserves and promote market opportunities. With these 77 varieties of uh, Mr. Uh, Valentino that we saw earlier, there might be only five of them that uh, are in uh, collection centers. So I, there is a lot of the legal part of these uh, legal aspects that are, are not actually helping with the seed conservation and use. Now we have uh, part four of this law on genetic resources. So here is where we see the National Institute for Agriculture and Foresty Innovation, ENIAF. Uh, it's in charge of guaranteeing the conservation administration uh, in situ or in the place of origin and ex situ or outside the place of origin of the genetic resources of agrobiodiversity. Uh, so the state, you know, here needs to do something in order to make sure that seeds are preserved and 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 improved upon. So, what we are looking into, and you know, still part of this analysis, given all of the the difficulties that are faced of being able to register seeds with the uh, ENIAF, uh, we are reading through it. In 
Bolivia, we have about 2,000 varieties of potatoes, but only 47 of them have been registered. And of these, not a single one of these registrations has actually been requested by a farmer. So under the uh, national uh, regulation on seeds, the farmer is never the breeder of the seed. So they, they cannot be considered the breeder because this regulation puts all kinds of things uh, up to block this from happening. You basically have to be an engineer in order to uh, comply with, with this requirement. So given this situation, our proposal is, uh, well, and we're already working on a community seed registry. So what we're doing is uh, working on in situ conservation and protecting farmers' knowledge. And what we're doing is we're working with the municipalities and we've got some reports for our project. So we have already seen some progress. So based on the regulations that we have, uh, the uh, productive uh, production laws, different, different acts, um, the municipality is working on a standard to be able to say these seeds belong to this municipality and of the farmers uh, that are based here. So we're working on this. And in addition to this, uh, farmers are organized under associations. And these are organizations that are recognized by the state. They're uh, regional organizations. So they have you know, their legal documents, uh, necessary, necessary uh, things. And you know, keep can keep track of the different varieties that exist in different uh, different areas. So we're starting with with potatoes, and we hope to progress on this front. So, uh, in terms of future future work, so what are we looking at? Well, we need to work on characterization according to the descriptors that are have been approved by ENIAF by the National Institute. And I know that this is quite a technical process, so we need more support. And so we're working with the uh, university, perhaps we need to, to start working with students. Uh, and uh, speaking of potatoes, we need a more complete characterization uh, based on the ENIAF uh, uh, requirements and uh, to make sure that uh, farmers can be considered the breeder of the seed. That's an important step. And so, you know, things can be, uh, you know, maybe you've been preserving something for a hundred years. This needs to be registered under ENIAF. So uh, this is sort of the danger that we're seeing, you know, around seeds, not being able to do this work, of course, poses problems. So I hope that uh, that was uh, clear. Uh, this is the you know information that I wanted to share with you, let you know about the work that we're doing around seeds. So thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much, Felix. That was a wonderful sharing on your work and situation in Bolivia. Our next speaker is Mamadou Goita coming to us from Mali. Mamadou is a development socioeconomist and specialist in education and training systems with a very strong background in the fields we're talking about today. He is the executive director for the Institute of Research and Promotion of Alternatives in Development, IRPAD, in Mali. Mamadou, if you'd like to share your screen, and you will have 15 minutes, we're looking forward to hearing from you.
Merci beaucoup. Um, donc, la présentation va être Thank en deux parties. Pour les 15 in... minutes, hein. uh, il y a Abdraman, donc, uh, va faire une présentation. Spared, Abdraman will be with me. Et ensuite, donc, uh, je, je compléterai. Mais juste pour dire que. And I will fill out, uh, il, y a, il y a des picture. enjeux. Merci vraiment pour cette invitation. Thank you very much for inviting me. Uh, merci pour uh, cette grande participation à ces débats. Thank Et you à, for, uh, for de, allowing me to participate in this debate. Les premières présentations qui ont vraiment éclairé de façon globale. We... L'utilité d'un tel instrument aujourd'hui. We're going to talk about uh, all of the usefulness of this today. À ce que les études de cas puissent se présenter. Donc le cas qu'on va présenter. So we're uh, going to present a case study today. Un cas au Mali et donc il se passe dans le contexte d'élaboration d'une politique nationale uh, sur les semences. Of development of a national seed policy. Et donc, cette politique qui, euh, euh, après euh, deux années d'échange, prend en compte la question des semences paysans aujourd'hui. Uh, this, this is about uh, uh, farmer uh, exchanges of seeds. Donc, nous allons, euh, donc je vais laisser Abdraman faire la présentation. I let Abdraman give the donc, presentation. Une dizaine de minutes. Ensuite, je vais revenir pour compléter avec deux ou trois éléments pour compléter. Uh, uh, add a few extra things uh, to what he has to say. Good uh, morning and to everyone and or, or good evening. It is a pleasure to present the uh, uh, participatory guarantee system um, for uh, vegetable seeds in our region, the Mupti region. Um, I want to inform all the participants that we are carrying out this pilot project uh, thanks to uh, some funding that we were able to get from Sem L'Avenir and also, also 11th Hour. Thanks to the leadership of our uh, executive director, Mamadou Goita, whom everybody knows. Next one, please. Let me present this uh, region that is the Mopti region in which the program works. It is uh, located in northern Mali, which is a fairly mountainous uh, region with mountains, uh, uh, plains and plateaus. Agriculture is the main uh, activity of the communities and it is uh, practiced by uh, small farmers who represent 95% of the population. The key characteristics of agriculture are that it is a subsistence agriculture with, uh, it is a fairly dry area with uh, 300 to 400 millimeters of rain per year. Main uh, crops are millet, uh, sorghum, um, and uh, uh, farmer vegetable seeds have almost disappeared, 90%. Next one, please. 90% are gone. So what steps have we gone through in order to uh, do this pilot project? Uh, first of all, we began with an assessment of our seed security, which is what uh, basically what Pratap was presenting earlier. And then, And then we worked on a market and a marketing strategy study. And we set up a, uh, a participatory guarantee system team and quality assurance team with 15 people. That team is composed of all the people who are working in our region on uh, uh, seeds, uh, uh, both uh, as including the beneficiaries. At this stage, we went on to uh, creating the uh, team so that people could uh, understand the participatory guarantee system, PGS. And then we we started working on production of, uh, uh, we gave uh, some some training on, on, on how to do all, how to produce your seeds, how to market them, what infrastructure do we need to do that and so on. Beatrice, next one. En place l'équipe SPG, nous avons élaboré un guide SPG et d'assurance qualité. Un client intérêt. Un client, un cahier de charge. 
Donc, euh, ce travail, nous l'avons fait pour que l'équipe vienne maîtriser le concept SPG. Le conseil SPG au Mali est un nouveau concept. Donc, après de les amener à adhérer euh, au concept guide SPG et d'assurance qualité. Donc, ce qui nous a permis, alors, présentement, nous sommes en train de produire 13, 13 cultures maraîchères avec au minimum deux variétés par culture. Donc, les recettes de l'organisation bénéficiaire s'élèvent aujourd'hui à quatre. Two, two varieties per crop. And so in December of 2022, following all uh, expenses, uh, the beneficiary organizations, that is uh, those who are using our uh, boutique to buy their seeds, uh, is, uh, uh, 99 people, including 44 women from 19 localities in the Mopti region. And in addition to these uh, recipients, we have uh, organizations who also uh, gets their seeds from our boutique uh, to, to revitalize the community uh, to get market garden seeds. Uh, so we also looked at some that were some seeds uh, that were uh, disappearing, uh, that are endangered, if you will, and this is really helping. This is a very important role that they're playing as well in our region because these are seeds uh, that are quite productive and this, the community is aware of how to prepare them, those products, that is. Uh, next. This is, uh, this is other outcomes with uh, the uh, uh, GSP team. And so when we do germination tests, uh, you can see that they're never 100%, but you can see, for instance, the shallot that has 78%. Uh, we have one that has 84%, and in our guide, if the germination rate is not above 70%, it has to go, but it has to be between 70 and 100%. If it's not in that interval, it's considered the, the variety is, the, it must not be sold. So. Some varieties, the uh, Pierre Benit, it's a type of lettuce, uh, is at 54%. We use this one because we wanted to see how we could improve the quality, uh, the quality of the seed and the uh, germination rate. Next. So these are a few uh, pictures of uh, production of a uh, gombo uh, uh, production, gombo seed res, uh, production. You can see here, this is uh, for carrot seeds. Uh, we also have shallot seeds here in photo three. The second photo is for carrots. So our site allows visitors uh, to see these uh, peasants. Uh, well, it allows people to come and the uh, peasants who live in different localities to come and exchange seeds and also allows people to learn uh, together. This is a tomato variety, four ribbed tomato that we got, uh, that we introduced last year. It's a variety that uh, people in our region really like. Max, please. Here are some pictures of, on the left, uh, shallot seed production. In the middle, we've got onion seeds, uh, the onion seed production, and the last one there is uh, lettuce seed production. Next. This is a visit, uh, a tour with the SPG team uh, who came to see this site uh, to make sure that it complies with the uh, guide that we developed and at every stage of this uh, guide the SPG team comes to check what's going on and uh, it accounts for all criteria that we need to follow to say that a 
feed was uh, produced in the best uh, conditions and is indeed a quality variety. So that's the end. Uh, thank you very much. I'm going to turn it over to Mamadou Goita to do a summary. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm going to be quite quick. Uh, you must have noticed that uh, we're really emphasizing two varieties of seed, of uh, garden seeds, uh, because uh, right, Mali, a lot of regions have lost a lot of uh, traditional seeds, uh, traditional market garden seeds. Uh, so this is due to several factors. Uh, companies across the agro industry uh, don't allow people to reproduce those kinds of like a lot of seeds and with different uh, production uh, 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 methods have led to a uh, there are also certain policies that are related to seeds that really did emphasize uh, two different models, uh, revolutionary models, uh, which also contributed to um, the to the genetical the genetic uh, variety of these seeds as well. So, in an environment uh, in a hostile environment, uh, um, we had to re constitute this uh, seed sovereignty and we wanted to increase the appetite of uh, peasants and people looking to work with uh, organizations to put this in place. So the whole matter of, uh, of uh, modern agriculture uh, helped uh, create uh, these uh, conditions in a difficult context and so we had we decided to we decided to leave the practical well to, to focus on the practical dimensions and also a participatory uh, certification with a few states so we could influence public public policies so this has an uh, uh, these policies have been influenced uh, by uh, practices on in the field and uh, Mali today is recognized uh, 150 of our uh, seeds are really peasant seeds uh, so these are exchanged and uh, uh, given away and uh, exchanged between different communities and uh, this allows us uh, so we also have a freedom to use them uh, with uh, the systems that we have uh, in place. Uh, and this allows uh, everything that uh, the previous presenter uh, said to, to, be, to, to, to be in place as well, so for us to, to function that way. So we wanted to integrate these uh, peasant uh, seeds uh, into the public policies. Uh, so in terms of the benefits that we can get, uh, but also for stability uh, to produce uh, these seeds in a stable manner. So we currently have in Mali 45% of revenues uh, in, uh, in, uh, from, uh, from the agricultural milieu that comes from uh, 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 vegetable and fruit production. So we do depend on uh, rainfall. And so when there are shocks in the climate, uh, well, the, the production, uh, we want to be able to everybody to have a, a supply of seeds uh, and to be able to continue to produce these, uh, these seeds. So we want to be able to have an economy where we can reproduce these, to, these seeds and we want them to be adapted to the agroecological uh, conditions that we're working within. So in taking into consideration this uh, condition, we produced a system that guarantees the community's uh, uh, high quality seeds uh, with the conditions that are defined by the community. And this provides stability and uh, sovereignty. I'm going to stop there without going into too many de details. Uh, the Malian legislation is starting to really take off uh, to help us uh, get uh, legislation that's based on uh, quality, reproducible uh, peasant uh, uh, seeds. Uh, so I'm going to 
stop there and I'd be happy to answer your questions. So thank you very much. I've seen a lot of appreciation for what we're doing. Thank you once again. Thank you, Mamadou and Abdurrahman as a team mm -hmm. in Mali for us, giving a very interesting case study highlighting the climate and regulatory issues that they have been addressing in Mali. Before our next speaker, a few reminders. We will have the recording of today and tomorrow available, as well as all the presentations. We hope to keep in contact with many of you and others who might not have been able to join us today for future events, including one specifically on seed security and assessment a few months from now. So please be in contact with us. And great appreciation for our interpreters today who are handling the English and French and Spanish translation. We have one more speaker coming up from Nepal and then we will take a short break and then have a discussion and open forum time. And also we've placed a reminder, thank you, Brian from Cody, to continue to remind you to register for tomorrow where we will have three more speakers, Honduras, Cuba, and Nicaragua will be tomorrow, as well as a chance for small group discussions, which we hope will be very interesting. So please register for tomorrow as well. Our next speaker now before the break is Sri Prasad Nupani from Liebird in Nepal. And he will also be addressing the unique situation um, for Liebird on the seed registration issues in Nepal. Sri Prasad is an agronomist and key plant breeder and researcher with Liebird with decades of experience on local registration of farmer varieties. Over to you, uh, Sri Prasad. I'm so glad you could join us, even though it is very late in the evening in Nepal. Uh, hello, everybody. Um, I am going to present on our experience, especially on uh, system for local variety registration and certification in Nepal. First of all, uh, I would like to uh, introduce uh, about some about our uh, organization, Liberd. Liberd is working on agrobiodiversity, uh, especially its conservation and utilization, as well as we also work on the uh, climate change and also the variety, especially the participatory plant breeding activities we are handling here in the board uh, uh, with the co collaboration with Nepal, Nepal Agriculture Research Council and various research institutions uh, within the country and outside the country. Uh, this is the outline of my presentation. Uh, actually, uh, in this presentation, I will try to highlight the local variety uh, registration, our experience on the local variety registration and the uh, seed certification system of these varieties. And so first of all, I would like to give the state of art about the participatory plant breeding intervention that we are carried out. And then I will try to highlight about the scope of farmers lead participatory plant breeding program in Nepal. And then I will focus on the farmers' initiatives on registering the varieties in Nepal, and <clears throat> especially how the farmers are engaged in the variety registration of local varieties, and their, um, how we are maintaining the farmers' varieties at the field level, especially the farmers with farmers as the front seat, and uh, those varieties which are developed, uh, which are especially um, uh, registered by the farmers how they have been uh, institutionalized with the government system and how their system is maintained. So I will try to capture some of the, uh, some of my speech on the seed certification system that we are working on. And finally, I'll try to highlight on the sustainability approach of the participatory plant breeding, especially the farmers led participatory plant breeding initiatives that we carried out in Nepal. Uh, this is uh, somehow about the part of farmers led participatory plant breeding. Uh, this is a very simple and effective approach where farmers will identify and select the varieties based on their need. So, 
uh, most of the so these activities will be carried out with the um, by utilizing the farmers field and so farmers will be in the driver's seat uh, to carry out the breeding activities and in this kind of uh, participatory plant breeding uh, the farmers will collaborate with the scientists and the technicians to identify the varieties where the most of the research and the breeding activities will be uh, carried out by utilizing the farmer's field. And so the farmers will be engaged not only in the last stage of the variety, because most of the, our, most of the conventional breeding program is uh, where uh, most of the uh, research activities, the breeding activities will be you know, carried out in the one station in the in very confined environment and the varieties which are developed from the research system will be carried out in the farmers uh, for the testing and the modification. So there are various limitations of this approach. So in this farmers led participatory plant breeding, farmers will start their journey from the very beginning. They'll select the variant and they will screen the germplasm and they will finally register the variety and maintain their source system. So today's presentation, I would like to highlight how the farmers were engaged in the variety registration systems, especially the local varieties into the national system. And so this is the whole approach where the farmer will be based uh, in this system to contribute of the farming community uh, where the agriculture is the main stay of them. And this is the context, especially in the country and also in Nepal. And we are facing, due to the climate change, we are facing various uh, biotic and abiotic stresses in these days. So this is the scenario that, that we are facing the drought due to the climate change and the biotic stress and different biotic stresses. And due to the, uh, the, the outbreak of this disease and insect bites in the recent years. And so Nepalese farmers are facing such kind of problem like some of the, some of the main varieties Sure. There is a problem that the, there is a now the variety like the hybrid varieties have a core formation. Excuse me. And there is the pollen like the, due to the sometimes due to the climate change, the temperature goes down and the, there is the lack of pollination. And also in some of the cases that their crop failure and, and also most uh, of the for developing like the small older farm is sharing the heterogeneous growing environment. So the varieties which are developed in the very uh, targeting to the very very commercial belt could not do better in the heterogeneous environment because uh, they have the recommended dose of fertilizers, foods. So those varieties which are developed like this scheme could not be good, good better in this kind of heterogeneous environment where the marginal and smallholder farmers are residing. So this is the whole approach we are uh, working with smallholder farmers actually to uh, to develop like the farmers led participatory plant breeding. Now I would like to I would like to enter into the how the farmers are engaged in the variety registration, especially local varieties. The farmers, especially the farmers, were uh, from the community seed banks, different cooperatives. Uh, they Hello? were engaged like new battery. Uh, so the farmers. Um, in our like the farmers led participatory plant breeding initiatives, so the farmers will be engaged from very beginning, like the uh, from the breeding process, like the variety, uh, like the germplasma screening, which is the most potential germplasm. They will uh, screen the germplasm and they will test in utilizing the farmers field and those varieties which is performing better in the particular environment, actually the niche environment. Here, I would like to highlight that the, in, in the farmers led participatory planning, uh, the varieties which, has, which are developed from the participatory plant breeding, they are not like the wider recommendations. They are specially targeted to the needs in like the very, um, the environment, which is very selective to the local, local targeting to the local farmers. So the varieties which are developed by this, uh, uh, with the farm, mostly uh, by the farmers, by themselves, 
uh, where the technicians were collaborating with the farmers and to identify their local varieties and to register. This is the snapshot uh, in this uh, uh, slide. slide. You can see here that the farmers is giving the presentation with the national seed, uh, like the seed quality control center in, in our cases, we call national seed board. Uh, there is a variety registration and re variety release registration uh, subcommittee. And this committee, in front of this committee, this is the very technical committee there, the farmers is giving their presentation like this is our local varieties we have the uh, this is we test in the farmers field and we identify this is the most potential variety and we are going to um, uh, and for this kind of local variety registration how the farmers is doing like they are collecting the one season data like the first like uh, they are testing not like the very very scientific like um, there are various approach of registering the variety some of the variety there need the, like two to three years data but especially for the local variety registration uh, they need the one season data and they are mostly targeted to the local land risk and the varieties with that like uh, they have been uh, growing from a very long time and so they have been evolving with the uh, with the uh, with the current context and they have been very very good uh, those varieties which are performing better uh, will be they will collect the data and they will submit the data to the technical committee and that the tech, and the farmers will give the presentation rather than like us and our team the farmers will prepare the proposal and they will uh, they will submit the variety like the local variety registration proposal to the seed quality control center and they will invite for their presentation this is the, in this slide the farmers is giving the presentation to the technical uh, committee next please yeah these are the varieties the, these are the local varieties especially the rice varieties and our maize variety and order like the neglected in we call as the noose means neglected and underutilized species that includes like the foxtail millet finger millet prosum millet and that some of the leguminous crops these varieties actually these are the local varieties and they the farmers will simply select they, they, will not, they will not do like a very complex uh, selection process. What they do here is like they, they have the, some population there and they start to select the population, they start to select and those um, very local variety which is performing better and they, they, they will start, they, 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 give, they prepare the proposal and they will submit. And these are here in this uh, slide, you can see the local variety that the farmers is registering in Nepal. That includes uh, uh, till, to, till today, there are 20 varieties, including the rice strain varieties in mains, two varieties, and in others neglected and under, underutilized species. All the 20 varieties, they are the farmers variety, farmers lead participatory plant breeding. The farmers have registered these varieties. And from this project, especially with the seed science, uh, we, uh, the farmers are uh, also engaged. And the um, five varieties, local varieties, uh, have been from the one season data, they, they submit the proposal and they technically defended. Now they technically defended and now these varieties have been registered into the national system. This is, the, this is how the farmers uh, have been done now in Nepalese government. If, uh, the give the space to register these uh, local varieties to the national system. Next slide, please. Yeah, this is the techniques of maintaining the farmers' varieties at field level. You can see here that I, I already mentioned that in the local varieties, uh, this is not targeted to like the broader domain. This is actually targeting because most of the local varieties are niche specific means they have been targeted to the very uh, specific environment where they have been evolving from the very long time. Uh, most of the land race, especially not only in Nepal in the global scenario, you can see that the most of the, uh, the land race have the very niche specific uh, nature. So they will be evolved in this environment. And they then uh, like in our cases, we, there are, uh, in, especially in Nepal, we have the uh, very lots of land races. The, among these land races, the farmers will select the most suitable land races 
uh, and this, they, they start to, to maintain these varieties like the, they will, uh, from the population, they will start to select the tutu type plants and <clears throat> those plants which have been <clears throat> registered uh, <clears throat> and the, <clears throat> their seed system will be maintained by following the, just by the negative selection. That means those varieties which are just, uh, which are infected with the, the disease our insect will be removed and others which have the desirable traits can be retained by the farmers. And then they, they will start to maintain these varieties, uh, not only the source seed and also the truthful and the improved seed. And this uh, improved seed will be distributed to the farmers. <clears throat> this is the recently released land race varieties in Nepal, uh, especially with the lead role of the farmers. Uh, these, most of these are the rice varieties and there is a own variety like the soybean variety. The farmers have been registering recently into the national, <clears throat> national system of Nepal. Next slide, please. <clears throat> um, now I would like to enter into the seed certification system uh, of the local varieties. Actually for local varieties, our seed certification system is relatively simple and especially targeted to the farmers at the driver seat. Here, like not uh, like um, very uh, advanced breeding program, there is the breeder seed, start the journey from breeder seed, foundation seed, certified seed, uh, improved seed. Here in the local variety, Nepal government, but, and our te uh, technical team, uh, which are working on the seed system, um, there are only the two categories. The, the uppermost layer is the source seed that we call, that is the more or less equivalent to the foundation seed. The, the source seed in Nepali, we call it the Surat view. And this source seed will be, is the, is the main so, source. And from the source seed, they, they, the farmers who register the variety, like those farmers which are engaged in the variety registering will maintain this variety because here, what the existing our seed uh, with this uh, draft uh, document uh, that we are working with the national system, what is done here is like the source seed is maintained by those uh, farmers which have registered the varieties because they have the two to type nature and they will select. And those farmers are the community who is want to multiply the seed. They want to take the permission from the those farmers and the, the farmers will decide either the particular domain is suitable for the multiplication of the source seed. If the domain is okay, then the source seed can be uh, grown by the another cooperated or uh, uh, community seed bank. Otherwise, they will only produce the source seed and multiply uh, as the improved seed. The improved seed will go to the larger scale. So there are only the two two um, category in case of the farmers local variety uh, rather than the four four category in, in uh, our uh, uh, traditional conventional plant breeding uh, activities next slide please um actually in case of the sustainability approaches um what we are practicing is the the community seed bank cooperatives they will maintain the source seed and by at the field level um, for the sustainability, especially in case of the source seed maintenance, the liver is collaborating, uh, liver and national system and department of agriculture and uh, rural municipalities and local, uh, local institution have been working very closely in our cases and where the cooperatives which would maintain the source seed, uh, especially those varieties, local varieties, which have been registered by the farmers, uh, they will start uh, from the beginning, like the variety registration process, the farmers uh, will start to collaborate with the national and the government system, uh, and also with us, with labor, uh, for starting to how to make the system sustainable. So here in our cases, the, what the farmers is practicing is uh, they, will, uh, they will produce the seed, source seed, and they will start to technically, uh, they will seek the support. And uh, now the government and national system is uh, working together 
uh, to maintain the, the local seed source seed at the field level. From the institutional approach, especially in case of the liver, and we have our own mechanism and how to strengthen the, uh, the farmer's community and the institution um, for maintaining the source seed of those var local varieties. Uh, so in our cases, we have uh, created some of the um, local innovation research and development fund in, in, in liver. Um, uh, there is a like a small basket fund and from this fund uh, we started to support the, this community institution like the maintenance breeding on farm research and others uh, breeding uh, like the, these varieties which have started to, to, to register by this and so in this whole process what we what we are doing not only on registering the varieties and but also working on the source seed maintenance but um, most important thing is that the farmers is selecting the genotypes. They will start their journey from the existing population. From the population, they will select the varieties, local varieties, which is novel one. And those novel varieties, they will be tested uh, in the farmer's field. And from one season data, they will prepare the proposal. And this proposal will be uh, submitted with the national system. And finally, the uh, uh, national, uh, like the seed quality control center, which is the uh, secretary of our system in our cases, they will invite for the presentation. And when the, uh, the proposal is okay and uh, approved from the, this committee, and this variety will get the legality and the sourcing maintenance uh, can be done. Uh, in our uh, seed regulation, there is another uh, there is another uh, point here is that those varieties which have not been uh, legally registered cannot be sold into the market as a uh, agro beds and other cooperatives. So uh, this is the whole system. Those varieties which need to be registered need to be maintained. So this is a uh, sustainable approach. Yeah. Thank you. Mike. Next slide. Thank you. So, the, uh, sorry, there is due to uh, internet disturbance. I can, uh, there is uh, some disturbance on the floor. But uh, if there, if you have any queries and comments on my, our, our presentation, I'm happy to. Uh, share my views and our views to you. Thank you, thank you for that time. Thank you very much, Sri Prasad. It is really great to have your slides and also to hear from you, even with a little bit of um, interference on the internet, the recording and all of the presentations will be available to everyone who is attending today. That is a reminder. Thank you again to our interpreters, interpreters today. Now we're going to have a time of open discussion uh, moderated by Pratap and Beatriz. Again, we have interpretation available at the bottom of your screen on a little globe next to the reaction button. Hopefully everyone has been able to find that. The recordings and presentations will all be available and shared and do watch for announcements of further conferences like this, especially about the seed security assessment and action plan in detail in the coming months. So with that, I think we will open up the forum. Please pay, place your questions uh, on, and ideas in the chat or raise your hand using the reaction button. I will do it on my screen so you see what it looks like. A little hand will raise like that. And Pratap and Beatrice will uh, call on people and we hope we can have a valuable discussion. Over to the group. But since you're here, a question for you. Seeing as you spoke for a little less time, was there anything you wanted to add that you saw in other presentations, uh, some similarities, things in common, any potential for future collaborations uh, or to exchange uh, further information? That's a question for you. 
Okay, thank you very much. What I presented, I can say that anyway, it's, it's very similar to what Pratap presented. And Felix uh, is his name from, Boli from Bolivia, correct? Yes, what he presented as well, it was quite similar to what I presented because in fact, uh, here in Mali, we are working on a project that was done by Seed Change 30 years ago. So with Pratap uh, support and all of your support, because you are uh, long standing employees, we were able to put that project together and bring it to life. So first off, we had the uh, seed security study that we did in compliance with uh, the methodology guide that was uh, developed with uh, the help of uh, Pratap and several others, and Pratap improved this as well. And so that's what we're continuing to work on. And now with this new concept of SPG, uh, which is for uh, seed security, we've adapted it to this new context. We've uh, taken several elements that we looked at with Pratap and Marvin uh, on, in our last meeting in Ottawa, and we are currently working through that. It's a new concept for us. So what we had to do here, seeing as the Malian government hasn't yet approved the, or hasn't yet recognized uh, 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 peasant uh, seeds. Uh, we're working on, uh, uh, we're working with our partners just on a trust uh, base, uh, basis. So we were able to identify all uh partners with the with the state with the government on uh seed production and on uh, certification matters also on biopesticides on on organic fertilizers so we have tried to work with those structures so that people that have a certain level of expertise uh, on this in this area can be part of this SPG team. So the guide that we developed and the agenda that we prepared with various criteria, using various cr criteria and uh, selection criteria for uh, seeds or varieties, when we do that kind of work, somebody comes and wants to pay for our seeds uh, and uh, looks at the germination rate. If that person is part of the team already, it means that the variety is a high quality one. Because in Mokti, even us, we go to that person for expertise, for, for their expertise. Uh, so the, the seeds that we are producing even if they're not officially certified with that technical service and research, we have no problems because at every stage, he or she has participated uh, right, up into, right up to the germination uh, trials, uh, germination rates to figure out the germination rates. So now we're faced with the question of degeneration, the, the degeneration of our varieties. So that's why we want to look at local varieties to see what they're doing to maintain them. For instance, when you produce uh, the lettuce variety or tomato variety, one of the questions I would like to ask to Pratap is to see if he can help me find, well, anyway, to see if he can help me find the answer. How should we go about uh, ensuring that we can always maintain a pure variety because it degenerates. 
I showed you a variety of tomato, the one that we like here. And we have very huge uh, yields with that. But then we see that uh, over time, the fruits become smaller. So what can we do? I just That's the solution that I'm trying to figure out in the fields with the SVG team when we do production. So as not to be hit by these problems, we try to we try to breed the fruit that are large and and uh, high yields uh, and the ones that uh, really res resemble the original fruits because we don't have a screen between different varieties and uh, so. We have to look at the seed population. And so I just like to uh, dive into that question with Pratap uh, and with everybody else, because you're all experts on this. So for now, I'm going to stop there and wait uh, to see if there are any other questions. Uh, and that's why I wanted to include that little film at the end, because it's recognized, it's acknowledged in Mali that the impact in the Mokti that was able to put such a practical project in place. So to put, to put this, this project in practice, to help with the peasant uh, seeds with an SPG approach. That is that there's a guarantee of uh, quality assurance, SPG in French. So I really do congratulate all the play, all the people at uh, Seed Change uh, that uh, is made up of Beatrice and everybody else. I don't want to uh, say any more names because I don't want to forget any, but I do count a lot on Pratap because uh, I, I always consult that document remotely. And I also want to thank our SPG team following the training that we did uh, and implementing the guide uh, that we developed. Uh, these are people that are very motivated. As you know, one of the most important criteria for uh, SPG, this SPG work is uh, that it's that it's free of charge. All these things need to be free of charge to allow the community to uh, to to take over and to ensure succession. So I'm going to stop there. Thank you to everybody who's uh, been working on this. We're working in quite this quite similar manners here. Thank you again. Uh, thank you, Abdurrahman. Um, Bea, do you see other questions on the chat or I can respond to Abdurrahman's? It's a very interesting exchange on um, how common is it to see local certification systems led by, by farmers and communities. Um, and Marvin's been exchanging a bit. So mm -hmm. I might suggest that we hear from Felix and then come back to this question, perhaps. It's it's very important. I think okay. it, it also speaks to what you've been working on in Nepal as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Over to Felix then. Have, is he clear about the question? Yeah. Felix? Well, I, I was uh, reviewing the idea and, and how we work with seeds, especially the recognition of the legal framework in every, in every country. In Bolivia, as I mentioned, there are several regulations in place, but specifically for seeds, there's an incoherence. It, it, it is, uh, you have the regulation on the one hand versus uh, the actual positioning of the states and the other laws in place. And the, the different agroecological production laws are not necessarily well aligned. Based on our experience, we can say that farmers are already convinced, some municipalities will recognize themselves as agroecological. That's a big step already. 
but the methodology and the approach that we are actually implemented with the support of different donors actually adjust to this specific proposal. So within the legal framework, the law, the legislation, we're trying to um, promote, enhance the community register. Of course, we're not we're trying to follow the law, so we don't see any issues in that. But we see that as important. We also have our community seed banks. I think we share that with the national entities. They already are aware of those banks. But definitely, the legal framework needs to change. The seed law definitely has to be amended so that it actually recognizes seed, farmer seeds. Farmers have huge varieties and they have huge knowledge. They know how to select, how to preserve, how to store. And based on that knowledge, seed banks could even be enhanced this year we have corn seed banks that have been, and seeds have been shared with different farmers so that municipalities can also empower themselves. This is the experience here in Bolivia, but I, I was hearing from other experiences around the world. And we see that some have been adapted already to the regular conventional law. So based on the Constitution, our specific laws, the warranty systems could be recognized such at least at that specific governmental level to protect ourselves. To avoid varieties to get lost. These are varieties that are very well adapted to climate change. So, for example, we make a very simple comparison. We do this analysis with, you know, a traditional potato which has been bred. Uh, there's a huge difference in terms of nutritional uh, quality properties. Native potatoes have a, a huge, uh, much, much greater uh, nutritional value than these bread varieties of potato. So, you know, we're always making our best efforts to make sure that farmers are able to protect their seeds and in this particular instance, uh, you know, vis-a-vis -vis the government. So we firmly believe that there should be regulations. So they are seeking out a regulation, you know, coming from the government so that this work can be can be done at the local level. So this is just one more step, you know, to say to the people, uh, the the seed uh, seed regulatory body, you know, this this is their work and they need to be doing their part. So we're making efforts to make sure that there is a change, so that you know there can be a regulation, so that the farmers' knowledge can be recognized and respected. And so we're, you know, dealing with the concerns that people have around seeds. And these farmers, they they were born with this. They've grown up with this. They work with this, live with it every day. Uh, we're far from food security at this point. The, a lot of the food that is eaten here in Bolivia is bad for health. And we saw a lot of problems during the uh, 
pandemic, who died, where, where were the highest, uh, you know, death rates? It was in cities when uh, during the COVID-19 pandemic, for example. And uh, so some things are very clear to us. So we're able to really continue our work and making our efforts to make sure that our seeds are protected. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you, Felix. Uh, if there is no other questions on the chat, maybe I can briefly say something and then maybe the participant can react to that as well. I think the, the whole issue is like, despite all the, the efforts we are making, to establish uh, and implement farmers' right. And farmers' right, which is actually uh, internationally approved in the in the International Treaty for Plants and Energy Resources for, for Food and Agriculture, which is in short, we call it ITPGRFA, also C Treaty, in Article 9, which specifically says that farmers, without any condition, are allowed, uh, have their rights, to produce, save, exchange, and market uh, their seeds, including the seed which is protected by IPR. But despite that, and many of the country we are working with are signatory of this treaty, but because of one small clause which says subject to national legislation, and that is, is, is kind of restricting farmers or implementation of farmers' rights, because the national legislation is also influenced by other treaty or other um, treaty, especially UPOB, if you if you know, like uh, which is an inter international uh, union for protection of uh, new plant varieties, which is uh, which is which is uh, which is a breeder rights uh, actually, and because of that, in many country, farmers are not able to actually produce their own seed, the seed, especially the local seed or seed, the land races. Though, as Felix was saying in his presentation, like farmers maintaining 200 varieties of, of potato. So it's not that farmers don't know how to maintain. They have knowledge. They have all the knowledge to maintain, to identify and maintain those variety and produce good quality seed. But the issue is uh, uh, because of the current uh, seed policy in law in, in almost all country uh, uh, is designed for the, for, the, for the commercial seed or the seed which is produced from the research, uh, 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 research development, uh, restrict or imposes a lot of restriction for farmers variety to be registered and produced commercially. Yeah, so that is the main issue we, we, ha we have. And we are trying to find ways to get around that. I mean, this is a bit a big, big struggle in all the country. And as you have seen, as you just saw in the, from the case of Nepal, that uh, and I was also involved in, in my previous work uh, to influence the change, changing the policy provision, allowing uh, uh, farmers to register their local variety of land use. Yeah. That was done in 2004. A five, around five, and uh, but uh, but it was not implemented actually uh, until um, uh, almost 2013-14. Like there was a lot of uh, variety by the formal breeders, uh, even local variety uh, through selection, like uh, in, from the population they selected uh, and and it termed it as an improved variety and register, but that was done by the formal uh, breeding uh, kind of system by the breeders. It was only in 2014 that that provision was used and uh, and seed change was very happy to work with a uh, local seed uh, community seed bank and also uh, with the national gene bank to register two uh, local landless variety of broadleaf mustard, which is used as a vegetable for the first time by the community seed bank and it opened the whole door actually the provision was there and then now as you have seen from Sri's presentation there are many uh, varieties of different crops local variety land races now has been registered and now farmers and the farmer uh, association or uh, organization like seed bank 
cooperative are able to actually firmly produce and market that seed. So that is what, as I also presented in my presentation, that we want to include like in, uh, the, uh, make changes in the formal seed system or uh, even including the seed policy and law so that farmers can uh, would be able to uh, produce and market uh, their seeds of their local variety of land based seeds. Yeah, that is the first, uh, th that is the kind of bottom line line we want to, to get there. It's very difficult, it's challenging in many countries, but it, the Nepal case is giving an example uh, that it can be done. So that is one thing. The second thing is the two presentations we had is, I would say it's a groundbreaking uh, kind of work which uh, we are having as trying to give an alternative uh, to formal seed certification and, 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 and production and marketing of, of seeds. Because also we want to see in this participatory guarantee system that is more farmer friendly, requires is a less uh, kind of procedural requirement for data and, 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 and kind of for farmers uh, to be uh, to, to, to produce. So uh, the, it starts from like characterizing, selecting the variety, characterizing the variety, and registering in the community register. So it's kind of registries and registration is part of saying that, okay, this, this variety is, the is, registration is actually uh, giving identity to a variety because if a farmer is producing and selling seed, I mean, other farmers who is buying seeds would like to know like, what is this variety? So it's kind of, it's nothing, it's nothing more than registration is nothing more than giving an identity to a variety. Yeah, and it's, it should be simple. And, and, and so I think if we, are, if we are able to demonstrate through these two PGS and other, other, other countries are also doing, uh, we, have, we know that our partner in Timor-Leste is also uh, piloting this. And from our uh, broader uh, PPB group, uh, working group we have, there are a lot of members in that. And uh, we know like in China, one ANGU is also piloting this, uh, starting to uh, to work on, on PGS system. So I think uh, it will be in the future a groundbreaking in a sense that it will be more kind of farmer led, uh, managed by the farmers. Uh, and uh, eventually create a kind of evidence as Mamadou and Abdurrahman was saying, create a kind of policy evidence to help bring changes in the seed policy and recognize the PGS uh, as an alternative farmer friendly system for production and marketing of locally producing and marketing of the of the farmer variety but i think there are challenges still like as a, and I, I think it's very strategic that uh, both in uh, in in case of bolivia with uh, prodi and also with irpat that they are forming strategic it's very strategic that they are forming a committee pgs committee which includes a government institution uh, and research institution uh, in a way to kind of give a recognition and support to that. So once they are involved, they see the process that is a, is a very kind of uh, a, a robust, but also uh, practical and 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 and, uh, and 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 goes with the science. Then it is easy uh, to make policy changes. But I think there are some some changes we also have to see, like how do we tackle that. For example, uh, Felix uh, was saying that uh, the characterization is, is, is still a challenge because <clears throat> we still have to use to convince the formal system, use the formal characterization process. But what we can also do is discuss with, with the formal system to actually, actually uh, strike a balance and come up with a kind of set of uh, uh, what you call uh, uh, descriptor uh, where you also include farmers descriptor so it's a combination of some scientific which is used in science like uh, in formal system but also include a farmers descriptor because if farmers can recognize and identify 200 variety of potato they have the knowledge they know how to do it it's just a matter of bringing that into the formal system also and have a sort kind of list of manageable size of descriptors. So I think there are these uh, things which we'll be working in the in the future. I will just take one minute to give an answer to Abdul Rahman about 
how to maintain the uh, the, the 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 varietal uh, characteristic or or the variety, uh, especially the source seeds. I think uh, we can discuss that. There are ways, uh, very simple ways of how to manage uh, maintain source seed, especially uh, using uh, looking at what kind of crop it is and a kind of if it's a cross pollinated crop, like how do we produce that select seed. So it will be a source seed, as uh, Sri was saying. Farmers will maintain a source seed through community seed bank or their farmer cooperative, and then that source is every time is used to produce the the certified seed. So I think we can discuss that. Uh, now I, over to the other uh, participants, and I see a hand from Susie Susan Walls, our ex director of uh, seed sense. Hi everybody. Welcome back. Uh, yeah. Thank you. And you. It's just so great. Moi, je pas, pas compris ce que Pratap vient d'expliquer. Uh, what did uh, I didn't quite follow what Pratap was just was saying. Uh, okay, uh, uh, Abdurrahman, like we can discuss that. There are ways uh, to maintain the the varietal characteristic or say the the uniqueness of the variety in terms of like as you said, like how do we? I mean, we have to look at like whether the size. A change in the size of the fruit is because of genetic or the production factor, and also we can use how do we select the source seed. So I think we can discuss that uh, separately, and uh, we have our colleague Marvin, which will uh, can also help us uh, in doing that. So over to Susie. So I, I was saying it's just so uh, great to see all of these uh, old friends and also the new leadership in this movement. And so my question relates very much to the leadership issue. Um, and um, we saw in the slides a lot of women participating in the field uh, assessments, etc. But I wonder if you could comment on on actually how women are emerging as leaders within this 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 movement because. That was always also a part of, of our goals for this program. And also we know that women are often key uh, to the seed selection process. So if you could, it's a less of a technical question and more on that social um, political dimension. Thank you, uh, Susie. I will, uh, I will direct this to our presenter uh, if they have any response on that and then we can come. And they can we can take this as well from seed chain. Uh, if you have anything, Felix, on on what Susie was asking, or Abdul Rahman, or Sri, like how do we how do you see the women's see, see, see. leadership emerging in this whole see. process? <clears throat> yes, yes. Uh, there have... are two speakers speaking at the same time. Okay, so first is Felix Primero... and then of the Roman. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, Felix. Sí. Yes, thank you, Susan, for the question. I just want to say that in terms of women's leadership, we have been moving ahead a lot really moving forward, we've been seeking out other partners who are supporting us exclusively in a gender perspective, particularly youth and women. And so in Bolivia, we have this uh, Chacha Wames uh, concept. We've been working with uh, family productive units in which women participate. And the men, it's it's more the uh, the young men, the children. And so over the weekend, uh, I was out in the fields of uh, the women, and uh, you know explaining things about agroecology, seeds with them, and uh, we're gonna organize a more visits certainly and and learn more things, but the this idea 
you know, of focusing just on technical ideas or male things, this is something that doesn't doesn't make sense now. So for us, it's very important uh, to that you know women can play a role. It's about accountability. It's about the contribution of households. Uh, we have many women leaders. We have associations that are changing. Um, they're working with, uh, you know, healthy, healthy food. We have an association for uh, food processing. And it's for um, food, uh, sorry, school, school meal programs. And we have a lot of women in uh, Chianta where they're growing vegetables and selling them. So we've got um, the uh, participatory guarantee system in Chianta, Namaganchi. And so there's lots of examples. So it's really done through family productive unit. This is where all of these uh, strengthening efforts are done. So despite the fact that, you know, speaking about young people, I, you know, they say, oh, they're not working in the communities, but that's not true. It's, you know, we, we have, you know, this idea in Bolivia, some people say, oh, young people shouldn't work. Um, but young people are the ones who take care of uh, animals. And they're very, very important in uh, family productive units for, you know, food, for milk, for meat. And so that is a contribution that they make. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Felix. Uh, now, I, can I go to Mamadou and Abdurrahman if the, you have any response before I go to Sri? And then we also have some quiz, uh, uh, okay. participants lined up, like Mercy and Dalmas. So I'll take those uh, questions okay. as well. Later on. Go ahead, please. Okay, the two of us are here. What I wanted to say regarding what uh, our role in terms of the process of recognizing seeds uh, and making them adaptable, we really did value the role of the woman because the adaptation tests that we have done, we base these on organo, uh, on, on The last word is, uh, we leave the last word to women in terms of the uh, agroeconomic uh, decisions. So uh, these are adapted and uh, refined by the peasant communication. So this has to be agronomolactic. And so women uh, determine uh, how to turn this into flour. They have to say such and such a variety is good for flour. And then in terms of preparation, the variety when you prepare it, uh, resistance and consistency, and then uh, also how it does in terms of transformation. So that's the reason that now in the whole process that we're doing in terms of adapted of uh, seeds on our territory, uh, the last word is uh, is left to women. And so all of our activities are guided by women as well. So we, in terms of our crops, uh, the program is based on this work that the women have done as well. So we have worked on uh, promoting, in the past we promoted uh, crops that were uh, driven by men and now we're over the last two years, we're trying to promote uh, the various crops uh, that were uh, various varieties to be considered neg neglected. Uh, to get them, we had to, you had to go to the market. Uh, 
products. So if you are uh, producing such and such a variety, uh, well, uh, you have to go to the market, like I said, and we want to make sure that you're able to get to, to obtain these. Uh, so currently, uh, everything we're doing in terms of seed production, it's women that are at the top. And so that's what I wanted to say for now. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Abdul Rahman. Uh, uh, Bea? No, oh, I just was wondering if um, also uh, tomorrow we have a bit more uh, equal, gender equality in our speakers. And mm -hmm. I think it's very important to note that for seed chain is very important to challenge the uh, rural extension model that is, uh, that is you know, part of this problem as well, and the importance of women working with women. Um, and in that light, I was wondering if we could uh, ask some of the, the wonderful plant breeders we have, rural women, with some of who will speak tomorrow, uh, but also going to the question from Mercy and then perhaps continuing on, uh, just to make sure that we have some, some other voices here. Thank yeah, you. So maybe Sri, you can wait a bit, please. And uh, let's take a question from Mercy. I think Mercy is from our, uh, our partner in West uh, East Africa. And just to mention before, like giving to, to, to Mercy uh, that, uh, like uh, promote, supporting uh, women uh, leadership, uh, especially around seed has been part of like integral part of uh, seed change program with the partners. And recently we have uh, from support from funding from uh, global, um, um, uh, from, uh, uh, from GAC uh, Canadian government, we have a project uh, called Rural Women Cultivating Change, especially uh, which is in uh, Ethiopia. Kenya and Tanzania, where specifically not only women's, uh, we're ensuring uh, uh, women's involvement in production and marketing and use of the seed of their local variety, but also looking at and supporting their participating uh, participation in pro policy processes uh, related to seed policy and even the, the climate change uh, policies. So with that, uh, uh, I invite uh, Mercy, please take the forum and uh, if you have any questions. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you for the good presentation. They are very comprehensive and very informative to us. So I have a, a question on uh, use, when we are using the P. Uh, your sound is breaking. Uh, uh, Mercy, can you say again? Uh, we have lost her. We have lost her. So maybe we can wait for her. Uh, but if uh, Dal uh, Dalmas, I also saw you. If you have any question, in the meantime, you can you can come in. I think uh, we have some. Uh, Hello, problem. bonjour. Uh... Hello, everyone. Sorry for the delay. I am Nana from the NGO uh, that has been working with uh, Seed Change for several years. And so I just wanted to say something regarding what we were said about the female leadership. Uh, in addition to processing, women also play a, a role in uh, community uh, seed banks uh, and processing uh, seeds uh, that we developed with uh, seed change as well, market garden seeds. Merci also said something regarding children, young youth. And youth is playing a big role in rural labor. And it's not uh, exploitation, uh, it's, uh, for, it's for learning. Children are very important. Uh, and this is very important to valuing and promoting agriculture. So thank you to all of you and thank you for Thank you to all of our partners and the big family, the big seed change family. Hello. Thank Abu you, Bomba. Nana. Nice to see Thank you back. You. Yeah, Bomba. 
Donc, je voulais ajouter ce que Nana vient. Je voulais ajouter ce que Nana vient de dire. Euh, il y a la commercialisation. Je voulais ajouter quelque chose. Uh, women are very involved also in uh, diversifying our agricultural, so we have anyway a large variety of, uh, of manioc varieties for transformation processing and also for uh, human and uh, animal feed. So we did have a variety that was a forage, uh, and uh, these are also very appreciated uh, for uh, uh, for, for, for people who raise animals. So there's also biopesticides and biofertilizers, organic ones. And so there are a group of young people who uh, organize themselves to produce this and to make them available to uh, the uh, producers. So that's what I wanted to add. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Nana and Bomba. I think both Nana and Bomba works with uh, Cap de Meso in Mali. Uh, and we had a long partnership with with them uh, for many years. So nice to see you. And and I, I must rec also recognize that both of them were also uh, participated in seed security assessment. So they are also local resource resource in the in the region if you if you need them. Okay. Do you see other question, uh, Bear? Uh, we lost Mercy. Giza? Yeah. Okay, please, uh, please uh, take your phone. Okay, so uh, maybe while we are waiting for the questions or any uh, remarks, I think I will give the forum to Sri briefly to say like how 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 the women leadership is being uh, being. Uh, uh, included in the in the program Excuse the work you are doing cap there's a woman named gisa who's been had her hand up for quite a long okay. time okay okay sorry for that because sorry gisa uh, gisa uh, because I, I didn't see you gisa yeah. i think uh, is our partner in ethiopia uh, yeah. please come in yeah thank you Pradeep, and uh, thank you the presenters uh, this is very much appreciated and uh, a lot is just coming uh, in partnership and in knowledge sharing, which I appreciate uh, very much. Mine is, uh, as the other speakers have touched it, uh, the issue of use in agriculture and the really a serious uh, danger which is uh, to come. Uh, I, I don't know uh, if there are any anything from the international experience in uh, just bringing back the knowledge system of the farmers and linking it to the with the current generation because uh, we are facing uh, a, a serious uh, threat uh, now in our experience because uh, youth are just getting away from the farming and farming experiences while we are talking about a revival of the farmers seed system it is all about talking about the future generation and how we can uh, bring back this knowledge system and the link it into the current generation especially around the education system is a big challenge that uh, we are we, we, we are experiencing and uh, if there are any international experiences uh, are from uh, any partners or researchers that would help very much in uh, linking the knowledge system into the current education um, practices. Thank you. Thank you, Gizo. I think uh, Gizo from ISD in Ethiopia, if I'm correct. So this question is quite open, like for anybody to respond. Uh, it's kind of intergenerational uh, knowledge sharing, uh, sharing of knowledge uh, between the, especially for the youth, engagement of youth. And I think maybe our, our presenter can also briefly uh, say like how youths are being in, in, in involved and uh, in terms of learning and also uh, in terms of also uh, learning how to produce uh, seed and, and seed marketing, but also conservation of seed. So I see hands up from Felix. Uh, Felix, if you want to respond, maybe 
let's stay be, be brief so that we can take more questions. Felix, over to you. Yeah, uh, gracias. Uh, uh, la, a la pregunta. Thanks to your specific question. Based on our experience, we have meetings, we held meetings in between elderly and young generations. So from 18 to 35, young persons and the elderly from 60 onwards. So this is the way they interconnect and exchange knowledge. We have specific questions for these two groups. Why did youth do not necessarily want to live in the farm or do not necessarily want to work on agriculture? So those are the questions we tend to reflect on. Why don't you want to stay? Why elders actually stay? We actually have received interesting responses to those questions. Youth do not necessarily say that they do not like the agriculture activity, agricultural activities or food, but what they need is the economic uh, resources. So we're looking for uh, improving our livelihood and, and that's our program try to integrate both generations. We need to teach them how to produce, but also transform and also market their their products, uh, creating associations with youth also collaborate together with the elders. There are good examples that are documented from our reality. Technology. <clears throat> it's good. Uh, to some extent, now we are slaves of technology, right? Uh, yes, it's helpful for communication, but sometimes it is an issue. There are several programs in place that to connect, to be connected with my friends, with my spouse. I at least need two uh, Bolivianos per day, but in my reality, I'm not getting that much money. And that's why I need to migrate because in the city, maybe I'm mm -hmm. cosas bien sencillas. earning 10 Bolivianos, but in the field, I earn less than two, and I cannot be connected with my friends. So that's a very concrete example on why they migrate. And, and but, they, but we have projects we support for vocational training uh, to create awareness uh, on the importance of agriculture. For many youth, uh, agriculture is a field or a work that can be also, or only, sorry, performed by uh, those literates or those that do not have enough education. But when we talk with the youth and we provide um, the benefits we share with them, why agriculture is key, is important in 50 years from now, we won't have food if we do not have youth working in the field. How can we get our food? And if we in the land do not actually work on, on the field, who will feed the cities? So these are the reflections that we share with them. And this is something that we have noticed. When thank we you, work on you. this analysis, we, we had this interesting results and these different ideas shared. They think on their animals, on their produce. And, and uh, yeah, you said something right up. I think I cut you off, but I, well, I just wanted to share these ideas with all of you. Yeah, thank you, Felix. Thank you very much. I think uh, we are now um, closing uh, this discussion session. Maybe. Uh, I think I'll give one minute to three just to like um, respond very quickly and then we conclude. Thank you, Pradasar. Mm, actually, uh, yeah, I would like to just to respond to two, two questions. First is uh, the woman uh, engagement and the leadership, especially in our cases, in our participatory plan building. Uh, most of the activity we, we have done through the community seed banks, 
and most of our community seed bank it lead by the woman woman as a leader and also there is a community seed bank association of nepal and this community seed bank association of nepal is also lead by the woman farmer so in both the community level as well as the national forum there is a huge participation of women so this is the um, strong point of our part uh, of our participatory plan building on women in in involvement and uh, especially in case of the intergeneration knowledge transfer this is the serious yeah this is the serious program in our case as well uh, we develop some of the hamas breeder in nepal uh, but later uh, the new generation could not be a, as a farmer's breeder, but when the local variety registration system has been appearing, uh, the there is still the, there is the attraction of the farmers uh, again in the breeding program because our local variety has been recognized by the national system. So when the variety has been re recognized and goes to the uh, formal seed system like the seed marketing and everything else, and there is again that this goes to the as a business system. When is it goes to the business system again? This became a lucrative system, like the every uh, new gen, like the new generation is appearing, and they start to uh, take it as the business venture. Uh, these are the some of our experience yeah, here. Thank in you, Africa. thank you, Sri, thank you, Sri. Uh, I still see a hand raised uh, from Nana and uh, Bomba. Do you have anything to add, or because we are now closing? Eh? Or it's just like previous uh, hand raise. Okay. Hello. Hello, hello. Yeah, Bomba, very briefly, eh, because okay. we are running out of time. Uh, uh, par rapport à l'implication des jeunes dans la production des semences, as to uh, the involvement of people in the in production of seeds, young people, that is, young people involved at all levels, from production to harvest or to uh, saving. We sh the older people show them how to uh, save the seeds, how to produce them, what products are used to for seed saving. So there's a young group of young people who work with older people and they learn these techniques for seed production. I'd like to add that these are practices that exist. The children are with their parents. So that everything they that is done is done with the kids. As of the age of seven, the kids get involved and they're involved in every part of the process. Before we leave, I'd like to thank everyone. I'm really pleased to see that the whole family is back together today. Thanks uh, to Beatrice for inviting us uh, to this uh, meeting. Again, thanks. Th thank Susie, you, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Nana and Bomba. I think I wish uh, we had more time to continue this interesting discussion. But as Bea said before, like we have time tomorrow as well, we continue this uh, uh, discussion and dialogue. Uh, but uh, before I hand over to um, Daniel Wanjama, I think uh, I, I, I take this opportunity to thank everyone for your valuable contribution, your participation, uh, uh, and uh, sharing your, your experiences. I think this was, this was great. I think uh, now uh, we are uh, coming to uh, end of today's uh, webinar. And before that, I would like to introduce uh, Daniel Wanzama, uh, our colleague uh, from Kenya, who is the executive director of Seed Savers Network, uh, which is a, 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 a non-government organization based on, on uh, grassroots level initiatives. And uh, as many of you know, might know, Daniel, 
has been a great leader in terms of uh, supporting on-farm conservation of uh, agricultural biodiversity, uh, especially uh, as an important component on, on, on a movement for agroecology, agriculture, uh, ecological agriculture production for healthy food, for food sovereignty. And uh, also, uh, seed change has been uh, supporting farming community uh, with uh, um, with uh, institutionalizing, establishing institutionalizing uh, community seed banks uh, with uh, a kind of almost like a gene bank at the Gilgil Center, SSN has, which I recently um, also visited, was uh, was uh, wonderful, which links to actually community seed bank, but also. Uh, their work has now been widely acknowledged by the government uh, research institution and uh, uh, in, uh, institution. And uh, also uh, there is a collaboration going on um, uh, uh, for exchanging uh, uh, germplasm seeds from the National Gene Bank to community seed banks. Uh, and also like other uh, uh, very important component supporting farmers uh, organizing farmers' uh, seed fairs and food fair as part of, of conservation strategy, and also involving uh, giving leadership for uh, pl participatory plant breeding uh, in creating diversity and choice for the farmer. So with that introduction, I think it's a very short introduction. He has more, uh, I think it will be, it'll be not uh, fair uh, to, to say in these few uh, words, but over to you, Daniel, uh, to uh, to share your re reflection and also close, uh, give the closing remarks. Thank you, thank you very much, Pratap, and uh, I am humbled with your long introduction. But uh, yeah, I'm happy to be here, and thank you again for visiting us three weeks ago and conducting this uh, training on uh, seed security assessment. We are happy that uh, our work is now going to benefit with that. And we are also very happy with the collaboration, the partnership we are having with Seed Change. And uh, definitely this is taking our work forward. And I am not very surprised, but um, the, I have now confirmation that the issues we are facing on seed, they are very much similar across the world. Uh, because, for instance, uh, the presentation by, done by Felix, and, uh, and thank you very much, Felix, uh, in Bolivia, and uh, we saw that uh, the, the, the issue of uh, registration of uh, varieties is uh, difficult, of potatoes, and this situation is very much similar to Kenya situation. Uh, Registration is one of the biggest bottleneck uh, in farmers uh, being able to register uh, their own variety because of the requirement in terms of technical uh, characteristics and also requirement in terms of the funds. And uh, to make the matters worse in Kenya, it is possible for companies or breeders to register farmers' varieties and own them. That is sort of piracy or obtaining intellectual property rights on farmers variety and um, other than making it impossible for farmers to register uh, the laws make make it possible for a private sector to register farmers varieties and own them and 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 I'm also happy with the presentation from uh, Mamadou and uh, Abrahaman uh, Goita uh, I also thank you for, for enlightening us on a participatory guarantee system on seeds, uh, because also uh, I know in many African countries, a lot of time, uh, if I could give the example of Kenya, organic seeds are illegal. So, and therefore a different mechanism for seed certification need to be found and uh, maybe PGS is one of them and uh, I'm happy that is already working there. We are already thinking about that, uh, finding a way of um, satisfying farmers' seeds using the PGA system because 
the, 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 the conventional certification system will not approve organic seeds because they are not dressed with the chemicals. It's part of the requirement in regulations to have them dressed in chemicals. And therefore, uh, we are happy with that presentation. We have learned a lot. And uh, we are also happy and appreciate the presentation from uh, Sri Prasad uh, because uh, it is in inspiring that uh, the authorities can recognize farmers' varieties eventually. In Kenya, you know, the, the seed policy recognized that most of the seeds or majority of the seeds come from the farmers managed system, yet the organic, the, the farmers managed seed system are not recognized anywhere by the government. Therefore, uh, this is also uh, motivating that maybe someday our seeds might also be recognized uh, by the authority. And uh, I, I, I thank Seed Change for organizing this forum. We have learned a lot and uh, it's, it's quite inspiring. And uh, I, I, I hope that we meet again tomorrow. Uh, we are happy also to participate again tomorrow. I remember to join in tomorrow. And uh, I want to wish you good day or good night or good evening uh, to all of you. And thank you very much for coming to the meeting. Thank you. Uh, thank thank you. you. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you. Uh, Bea, you have anything? Uh, or Kate, anything, announcement for tomorrow before we close? Yes, I think in our closing here, and we've just seen that Mercy was able to reconnect at this last moment here. But uh, so I think tomorrow we'll ask Mercy for her comment, her question that we missed her before. So she will be the first uh, moment tomorrow uh, when we gather. It will be the same time uh, tomorrow which is eight o'clock Ottawa time, which I believe is, is that four o'clock East Africa time? Ah, we're seeing a time is being placed in the chat right now. Uh, I might also ask if Brian Lazari from Cody could put in the registration link again to the chat right now, because you do need to register separately for tomorrow. They are two separate uh, links. So the registration is on the Seed Change website under events and also at the Cody Institute website uh, under Seeds of Survival. You should be able to find those links to register for tomorrow. The recordings from today and all the presentations, as well as tomorrow's presentations, will all be made available to everybody uh, a few days after the conference. And we're very thankful for our colleagues at Cody Institute for supporting us in putting on the conference today and tomorrow. And thanks again to our interpreters. So it's been a great three hours together. We will see everybody tomorrow, we hope, and perhaps some others will join in. Thank you very much and have a good rest of your day or evening, wherever you are. Yeah. See you tomorrow. Thank you, Kit. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Okay, see you bye -bye. all tomorrow. Yeah, bye bye. Merci, Pratap. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, bye. Nana. Thank you. Nice bye. to see you again. Merci. Merci. Au revoir. Bye. 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 Bye.